I say uh, it's impossible to predict what will happen. Good evening, everybody. This is Joe Joseph, along with my co-host, John King. Uh, A.C. Griffin will be calling in shortly. We're joined tonight by uh, Mr. John Moore. Uh, John Moore is uh, the author and um, creator of a very, very interesting presentation called Global Warming, What the Government um, Isn't Telling You. And uh, I want to give a little background on, uh, on John Moore. And to do that, i um, just going to read his bio real quick for you folks. Uh, JR flew 57 combat missions over Vietnam and Cambodia, many of those being hit by enemy gunfire. John went on to join the Green Berets at Fort Bragg, where he trained to invade the Middle East. He also did classified studies of Middle East terrorists for the Special Forces. Special Ops, Covert Ops, Psychological Operations, Undercover Ops, sur uh, Surveillance Operations, Bodyguard for Executives and Stars like Jane Fonda and Charleston Hes Charlton Heston, uh, private investigator, firearms instructor, intelligence analyst, and homicide detective. These are the jobs that have kept JR busy. Now, the, the big announcement right now that, that I have and, and the, the, my research associates is the following. Uh, the Gulf Stream has stopped. Now, in my video you watched, Joe, uh, I make reference to the Gulf Stream being at risk of stopping. Right. As a matter of fact, I think you referenced that it was slowing at that point. Yeah, yes, it was slowing. And, and uh, I work with Dr. Deagle on Genesis, and I'm, I'm a co-host on his third hour every Friday. Uh, one of my research associates got me an, an article written by Dr. Zangari, a PhD scientist uh, in Italy. And Dr. Zangari was publicly saying that the loop current for the Gulf Stream, the North Atlantic Thermal Hailing Conveyor, as other names for it, was at risk of stopping. And in a few days later, he announced, well, it has stopped. And that was on June 12th this year. And anybody can go to the United States Navy a website, uh, there's a particular page, of course, and it's a massive website, and they have images of the temperatures of all the oceans, the satellite images. And you can, you can see right there on the satellite image that the Gulf Stream comes up the east coast of the United States, gets to Cape Hatteras, not far from you there, Joe. Right. Goes east maybe 100, 200 miles, and stops. Now, this is incredibly important. Now, I've always known that the Gulf Stream at least affected the weather of North America, inland from the east coast, several hundred miles, and of course England, Ireland, Scotland, France, Portugal, and so forth, with moderating influence for wind through especially. Now if you look at a map of the world, or a globe, a globe is even more dramatic, you look at England, Ireland, Scotland, and you go due east, you find out Moscow is just as close to the North Pole as England, Ireland, and Scotland are. Uh, the reason England, Ireland, and Scotland have very mild winters where a bulky wool sweater will do just nicely, is the Gulf Stream, or at least up, up, up until June 12th this year. I was looking at the ocean temperatures in the last 24 hours in that part of the world, and they, don't have, they're no, they no longer are getting the warming effect of the Gulf Stream. That's over. Uh, there's some speculation among the scientists and researchers I'm working with as to how quickly the winters of Moscow are going to settle in on London. We don't know. We do know this, however. That according to Dr. Zangari, here's a, here's a quotation as close as I can get it, paraphrasing him. The Gulf Stream is the pacemaker of the climate of the planet. It affects the, the, the air temperature up to seven miles high above the Gulf Stream, which of course impacts the jet stream. And, and all these systems, the loop currents, are all connected worldwide. So we, there's a lot of speculation because last time this happened was many, many thousands of years ago. We, we don't have records accurate enough to really know what happened with any precision. Uh, uh, the, the, the future film, The Day After Tomorrow, comes to mind. Now, there's some science in there and some science fiction. The science is things that have happened in the past. They start out with the part of the Ross Ice Shelf uh, breaking away in the Antarctic. That's a very dramatic uh, recreation of something that really did happen. And then there's uh, a scene inside the museum in New York City where the, these young teenagers are looking at a uh, mammoth, a stuffed and mounted mammoth that was found frozen in the uh, Siberia. Hundreds of these mammoths have been found. They were found in a standing position, eating tropical, semi-tropical plants. Flash frozen so quickly that 3,600 years later, their meat was harvested and sold in Paris restaurants as a delicacy for human consumption. Now that's flash frozen. <laughs> For sure, yeah. That's, that's real. I mean, we're talking something three times the size of an African element, elephant, frozen so quickly that the meat remained fresh for 3,600 years. 
Uh, so in the, in the film, The Day After Tomorrow, they have an instant freeze of that nature. It's a very dramatic uh, graphics that they use, uh, computer-generated graphics, which are very spectacular on one hand. On the other, there is precedence for that, for that having happened in the past, and that evidence is in the form of hundreds of mammoths frozen standing while eating tropical, semi-tropical plants. John, what do you think the, uh, the mechanism is that makes these events recur again and again? Well, it's, the mechanism is a planetary size object that comes through our solar system about every 3,600 years. How does that affect the events? Well, that, that's, that body, that, that, that planet, it's called many things, Planet X, the destroyer, in the Bible it's called, called Wormwood. It interacts with all the planets, including ours, with gravity and magnetism and electrical energy. And it interacts with our sun. Now, people always want to bring up the topic of HARP. We start talking about whether uh, people say, John, what about HARP? Well, let's address that real quick and get it off the table. HARP is an acronym, High Altitude, High Altitude Auroral Research Project. Uh, there's two versions, ours and the Russians. Ours is the larger of the two. It's the world's largest radio frequency transmitter. It's a big radio transmitter. They're not broadcasting in Goldie Old Goldie Oldies. They're uh, transmitting energy to manipulate weather as they choose. And they can do that for a relatively compact area, maybe 100 by 100 square uh, miles, about 1,000 square miles, which would be 100 by 100 miles. And they can do that for maybe 72 hours or so before they need to shut down their transmitter and give it a break. They can't run that thing 24 hours a day, seven days a week. They can't affect all the weather on the planet all the time. They can affect weather in one part of the planet some of the time. They can probably steer a hurricane. They probably can't start it or stop it, but they can probably move it like, a, like you'd move a shopping cart by making the atmosphere cooler on one side and warmer on another. The, what the transmitter does is, is create warmth in the atmosphere is what it does. Um, so that's not the cause of what we're talking about. The tenth planet, however, is the cause. The Pioneer 10 space probe found this thing in 1979. They knew where to go looking for it because of ancient manuscripts that the Vatican has, that uh, the Babylonian clay tablets that Zachariah Sitchin translated. They, they had a very specific part of space to go looking for it. And, they, of course, astronomy played a, great, a big role in this. One of the scenarios being talked with, about with Planet X is uh, entering into uh, another ice age, much like uh, that movie, um, The Day After Tomorrow, where right. you saw the majority of the United States um, um, being covered by ice. Uh, do you see a perpetual winter scenario taking place? I see it as a possibility. I see it as a possibility. Now, what happened in the film took, took place in a matter of hours. Right. Uh, we, if we're looking at ice age, it would not necessarily take place in a matter of hours. It, it may be more a matter of years, we hope. Uh, the more time we have to prepare, the better off we are. Now, you, you can live and survive in Arctic conditions, of course. People have been doing it for many centuries. But you have to have infrastructure to support you. That's a problem with England, Ireland, Scotland, and other areas uh, that have, have been kept warm by the Gulf Stream is that the infrastructure won't support human life once it gets to the kind of winters they have in Moscow. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the pipe, I doubt that the freshwater pipes in London are buried more than 18 to 24 inches deep at the most. The freshwater pipes in Moscow are probably 7 to 8 feet deep to deal with those kinds of winters. Right. There's nothing in the human-built infrastructure in the United Kingdom is built to deal with these kinds of winters, which means tens of millions of people would have to go and live some cells because the infrastructure they've got won't support human life. Right. I say uh, it's impossible to predict what will happen. Good evening, everybody. This is Joe Joseph along with my co-host, John King. Uh, A.C. Griffin will be calling in shortly. We're joined tonight by uh, Mr. John Moore. Uh, John Moore is uh, the author and um, creator of a very, very interesting presentation called Global Warming, What the Government um, Isn't Telling You. And uh, I want to give a little background on, uh, on John Moore. And to do that, I'm um, just going to read his bio real quick for you folks. Uh, JR flew 57 combat missions over Vietnam and Cambodia, many of those being hit by enemy gunfire. John went on to join the Green Berets at Fort Bragg, where he trained to invade the Middle East. He also did classified studies of Middle East terrorists for the Special Forces. Special Ops, Covert Ops, Psychological Operations, Undercover Ops, sur uh, Surveillance Operations, 
bodyguard for executives and stars like Jane Fonda and Charleston Hes Charlton Heston, uh, private investigator, firearms instructor, intelligence analyst, and homicide detective. These are the jobs that have kept JR busy. Now, the, the big announcement right now that, that I have and, and the, the, my research associates is the following. Uh, the Gulf Stream has 